Why should we pay attention to the invisibility of older people having sexuality? This is Joan Price from JoanPrice.com, and I'm Kathy Bartoli from the Intimacies at Dojo.com. And Joan, um, you're submitting, you have a talk you're giving um, on the Invisible Seniors, Older Age Sexuality as a Human Right at Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit. And I love the topic. It's such a useful one. And I'd love Thank to hear, you, why, did you, why did you choose to talk on this? What, I know that this is your, your vocation, your calling. Well, this is. I've been doing this work for 13 years, uh, helping seniors maintain or improve or regain their sexuality. This is what I do. I've written several books on it. I have a blog. I do a Q&A column. Uh, and so within the person-to-person -person realm, um, this, is, this is my world. Yeah. But in the world beyond that, so many people see seniors as asexual or as ludicrous if they want to be sexual. There are no end of uh, geezer jokes, but there isn't a whole lot of just older age acceptance. And this isn't just at a one-on-one -on -one level. This is also uh, in the medical profession. Mm -hmm. This is also in our communities, our social services. Our, one, one person wrote me that I sent out a, a, an, an email, a blog post, and, a, and on my Facebook page, I said, if you are a senior and you have felt invisible sexually, send me your story. And I got a lot of them. Yeah. But one that I hadn't even thought of was, um, I use the computer at my senior center, and sex, the word sex, is blocked. Oh, so that means maybe their intention was to block porn in front of people walking by, but the result of it is sex ed is blocked, mm -hmm. safer sex is blocked, uh, sexual health, sexual problems, sexual challenges, they're all blocked. Yeah. The information that those of us in the field are trying to disseminate to people they can't get any of it. is blocked, yeah. So, this really does seem to me to be a human rights issue, that seniors as a population are dismissed, mm -hmm. are seen as uh, they, th their sexuality has expired. Yes. <laughs> and, and so they're no longer sexually viable and they don't need to be seen that way. And oh, I don't know, I just want to change the world a little bit at a time. I love that, because <laughs> our sexuality is so, like people can be asexual but still have a sexuality that it's very core to our identity and it's core to like how we express ourselves in the world. Well, it is. And, and in fact, I like to use the word sexual expression mm -hmm. rather than having sex when I have these discussions with people in my age group because we have this loaded definition of what we think. Penis and vagina and... Oh, I know. Yeah. But it could and, be just as, as, as... It could be flirting with someone or, or joking with the waitress or the waiter and like a little wink or very, very lighthearted and playful, but that's a sexual expression. And it could be having sex with sex toys and not with a partner because the partner has died or the partner is no longer interested. I mean, there's so have, many ways. Yeah, it could be that having sex can, with several people if you wanted to at the same time. We or at or at sequential times, right, however exactly. you want to do it. Absolutely. I like that freedom of that. Exp that, And, you know, it's really interesting because I went through a time... Um, I'm a bigger person and I had been really struggling with the, the belief system in our society because there's a lot of invisibility around sexuality for right. bigger people and older people. And I hate how they make the sitcoms, it's a it's like a little ah. joke, like, oh, look how cute that is. And it's kind of disgusting. Yeah. Um, whether you're fat or big I th or older, I think that's the same. Exactly the same, exactly. Um, I know, and I, I appreciate how well you've attuned me to that. Because in hearing you saying, speak, I have a better understanding, and I see it as so often the same thing, mm -hmm. even the same words. Mm -hmm. Oh, it really oh, is. Aren't they cute, or isn't that disgusting? Yeah, and it's kind of patronizing and not important, and it's like, That's no, right. it is. It feels fucking good, and I want yeah. to own that. I want to own that part of me. That's right. And I think when it's not role modeled, I, when, I, when I was 40, I was really struggling with this, and I really had shut down. I hadn't dated for 14 years at the time. I was like, oh, I'm too old. I'm just going to coast to the grave. I was 40. Um, but I had that belief and I didn't flirt. And I just kind of, I think because I had that belief, I just didn't even notice if someone was like flirting with me or 
there was any appreciation or there was no dance with it. And yeah. I'm 50 now and I way the same as I did then, but I have much more sexual and engaged than I was then. Um, Welcome to the Over 50 Club. Uh, thank you. I just turned, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love that you're role modeling. We can be out there having a fabulous time. Yeah. What's one of the, I mean, we have the social pressure, definitely. That's the, the media and social, social pressure. Um, what is something else? Like, I know there's a lot of baby boomers going through, and they were mm-hmm. raised very conventionally. Um, I know my mother has shared a lot of stuff with me as she's seen me talk more about some of these things. It's like she had no education. She didn't know oh. what things were or how to... Uh, when, with, did you see that a lot with the people that you're working with and people oh, that you're trying God, to inspire? Oh, God, do I have stories for you, Kathy? Yeah. And I'll be doing some of that in my presentation at oh, Woodhull, no. too. I can't wait to see the it. The way we were taught about sex was not to teach us about sex. Mm-hmm. And in my own life, I shock people when I tell this. I'm 74. And when and I was... Active. I mean, I'm sorry. You don't, <laughs> you're, you're very... Um, in, I guess I still have beliefs about age. See, they're coming out still. This like, is what 74 looks like. Why not? <laughs> this is what 74 sounds like. I mean, we do. That's one reason I encourage people to tell the truth about how old they are. Don't have to lie Because they it. often don't. They say, oh, no, no one will take me seriously if I admit I'm whatever I am. No. They'll only take you seriously if you do admit yeah. it. But when I was um, a child... My uh, my father decided he was going to give me the sex ed lecture. Mm-hmm. It was a pamphlet about how girls get pregnant and why we shouldn't do it. Yeah. Now there was something missing in that pamphlet. Nothing Can about pleasure. What, what? Nothing, Nothing about pleasure, but it didn't even explain how the sperm from the man got to the egg of the woman. Oh, wow. I had to ask a friend who had gotten the same pamphlet the same night like, because <laughs> our parents had been in cahoots. <laughs> and I said, how does that, how what do happens? they do that anyway? And she, far more savvy than I, said, he puts it in. I went, oh, God, no, <laughs> never. I'll never do that. I'll never do that. My parents must have done that twice because I had a brother, Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd never do. The funny thing is, I mean, it's funny in retrospect. It wasn't funny at the time. My father was a gynecologist. Oh, wow. So he had a lot more knowledge. Yes, but he taught me nothing. Yeah. Nothing except how to avoid pregnancy. And I I didn't even teach me that because he didn't tell me what to avoid. (laughs) I just pictured the sperm flying through the air. No, no. (laughs) Don't get too close. I don't want to get pregnant. (laughs) And and so many of the people in my age group were younger, Eve, 20 years younger, um, but mostly my age group and older. They've had that kind of experience where there was no sex ed in that. There was nothing about arousal. There was nothing about pleasure. There was uh, watch out because boys want to will try to make you do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not exactly a relationship skill that I needed to be taught at that time. I needed to be taught something else. And the result of that was is that my first makeout session with my boyfriend when I was... 15 and I know pretty late but that was the times I was 15 and he was 17 and I got so excited I thought I'd invented something <laughs> <laughs> well you did it was wonderful I didn't know that invented could it. happen I know um and so no wonder there were people tromping through my father's medical office uh with for pregnancy tests yeah well, I think one of the things that I think is the most horrible, and I have an abuse history, so I kind of like, I've really examined like how I didn't know what was happening to my body, but we're not taught about, like even today, there's very little education, there's, you know, abstinence only or whatever. We have this body and we're taught all these things about our brain. We understand yeah. how our eyes work, our mouth works, but we have this whole region of our body and this whole set of responses they yeah. feel like they're you have to watch out for them you have to they'll they'll take over or they'll try to t- mm. and there's just fear of our body and this unknowing that yeah it's very hard to feel confident and own our bodies and mm. say hey i want to i want to honor and take care of my body when we're trying to like oh watch yeah. out i don't understand it but i understand it's dangerous yeah, yeah. 
So, wow. So how and how do you have a conversation about sex when you've never been taught any of the words or the concepts? Yeah, I would. When I was when I first started working with a dating coach, I would use I would say down there, and he's like, Kathy, you're a PhD. What is the actual word? And I would like, vulva. It was so hard. So yeah, we we don't we don't practice it. We don't talk. I mean, I imagine there are some friends that do talk about it, and I know in our community we do. But the mm-hmm. average people sitting around having coffee are not saying, right. yeah, when I had sex last night, it really hurt. Yeah. Like, you know, is there something wrong? Or we just think mm-hmm. there's something wrong with us and we internalize it. Right, right. We think we're broken. Whatever goes wrong, we think we're broken. Yeah, and it's really terrifying. And then to get into my age group, when things do start to go wrong, yeah. we think, oh, well, we're old. We must be done with sex. Yeah. No. No. For every problem, there's a solution, and it yeah. means getting the education, finding out what is going on, what's causing this thing that's that's getting in the way of our sexual expression. Yeah, and I love you have a lot of resources for people because it's been, like, there are some amazing GYNs out there, obstetricians, but, like, I've gone to some and I've asked about, like, the G-spot. Oh, that doesn't exist. Like, I'm, <laughs> oh. I, I actually do know it exists. Or like I asked about squirting. I'm like the other night I, I never squirted before, but I when I orgasmed I squirted. Oh no, that's just pee. We have surgery that can fix that. Oh! And I was like, wait, no, no, no. I know this is squirting. Like I know it's like this is something different. And they were wow. like very you know lab white lab coats. And thank God I had a little more education. Yeah. The average person is gonna does not right. right. So I think that you know mm-hmm. having resources like you make available are so oh, precious. Thank you. Thank it's you. So. Yeah, just knowing that, hey, if you're a little drier when you're older, you need a little more lube and maybe a little more time to warm up, mm-hmm. um, things like that. What, what are some other tips you give people that are they might run into when they're older that they, their bodies might be doing different things than they did when they were younger? Well, the main umbrella term I use is the old ways don't work the way they used to. Uh-huh. And that covers a lot of things. Slow arousal, slow orgasm. Um, Maybe much more difficulty reaching orgasm, or it seems weaker. Uh, erections aren't as hard, or as long-lasting, or as dependable. Um, arousal of the the clitoris takes longer, and maybe needs a lot more direct, sustained um, stimulation. Or there may be some things interfering with our sexual function. For example, the medical conditions we have, the medications we're taking, oh, so many, of them, many yeah. of them have sexual side effects. And we're often not told that. And when you're given six pages of minuscule print uh, with your, who's going to even look at that? So we really need the medical profession to start taking us seriously as sexual beings and to assume that, yes, we're sexual unless, we're, unless they're told otherwise, instead of the other way around. It really is. As, as a big person, if someone will say, are you married? If I say no, they assume I'm not I'm being sexual. And I'm like, actually, I have, I'm poly. I have several partners. And I would like to get tested for STIs every so often. And they're like, a lot of them are just like really like, Oh, right. like they have to, re- <laughs> they have to re. If you can just see all the like the movement in their brain, um, we have a silver bullet in this gun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's it's. They, I know it's not intentional, but that's a microaggression someone has to face. It's hard enough to ask for these things, yeah, or ask these questions. And when they face someone who's like, "Oh, you're sec, you're 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 seventies or eighties, like you're sexual," that's really hard on people. Well, it is. And someone just wrote me today, in fact, telling me about seeing a doctor, a male doctor, who spent most of the time, when we have the term mansplaining, I guess we could call it medsplaining, um, that she shouldn't expect the same things from her body, because after all, it was aging. And she wanted to talk about her slow arousal, and he's dismissing her pretty much just say, well, what do you expect? You're old. And this has happened to so many people. I, I, one of the things, I've been doing some more reading on this because I, I'm 50, I'm starting to, you know, I'm getting, mm-hmm. it's something that's starting to reach me and some more of my clients. And the, even things like some, if we're not getting enough, like apparently magnesium helps the body relax a little bit and open up. So mm-hmm. like if we're not getting enough, and I'm not an I'm MD, so I'm not 
I'm just like the more I read about it there's there's even nutrition that can help the body be more responsive and feel more vital and and if you can't ask your doctor hey am I is my body functioning really well I want to enjoy this yeah. beautiful sexuality and especially if we can let help people let go of the we're going to go through these stages and then we're going to have penis and vagina and have orgasm and then he's going to fall yeah. asleep there's so even like I've had amazing sex where there was never penis in anything well, there you go. Yeah. And that's one of the things I teach. Yeah. I give a workshop and there's also a webinar on it called Great Sex Without Penetration. Oh, lovely. Is that on your website? It's um, it's on my, the information about it is on my blog, nakedatrh.com. Okay. Okay. But if anyone wants to email me, joan at joanprice.com, I'll send information about that. That's I give it as a live workshop. Often it's my most popular workshop yeah. these days. And I've done a webinar on it so that you don't have to find me in person to see right. it. It's harder sometimes if you live someplace that Joe yeah. is, you're yeah. traveling directly. Um, so I want to make sure we get to what, uh, this is really fascinating talking to you, but I want to make sure, <laughs> why do you, you're presenting this at Woodhull and you've, I've seen you there yeah. so many years, it's been so fun. Um, why, why is what, Woodhull one of your venues of choice for sharing this? Woodhull, Woodhull is a really special place. It's the world we would create had we the capacity to create a world. Yeah. It's full of people who are not only sex positive, but so open to other people's experiences. I get people of all ages in my workshops or coming up and talking to me and saying, whoa, I didn't know that. that and I think of young people as seniors in training anyway, so I think this is good information for everyone. But I love how Woodhull has the uh, educational and the activist perspective. Yes. Yeah, the blend. You know, okay, now we understand this. What do we need to go back to our communities to do mm -hmm. to make this better? And I love that. I mean, where do you find that? I, I remember when I was first, like, discovering activist channels I went to several you know, organizations and watched things and there was a lot of this is wrong this is bad which was really helpful really informative but there wasn't the focus on solution what can yeah. I go out in the world and do what can we do that's as a, right a community? And yeah. I really love it yeah. um, if someone was shy or feeling like oh I'm too old or too, too new to the community to come to Woodhull what would you tell them come Suspend your fear because it's fear. It's fear. It's not a belief I'm too old, but it's a fear. What if they find me too old, yeah. right? You won't find that at Woodhull. You won't find anything but acceptance. Mm -hmm. If you're accepting of other people, they will be accepting of you. That's all there is to it. Yeah. That's the magic key. It is. It's and it's beautiful. so simple. And, and wouldn't it be wonderful if our whole country ran that way? Oh, it, yeah, I, that's, I was very shy when I first went to my first one. I was surprised mm -hmm. how welcoming people were. Yeah. And you can ask really beginner questions. And as long as you're curious and not that's mansplaining right. or mansplaining, then people are really open to sharing. Right. Yeah. Right. And just be aware if you're going for the first time and you're not used to a sex ed kind of conference or, or sex activism kind of conference, you're going to meet people you don't encounter in your normal life. Yeah. And so don't come in with preconceived notions that um, if someone does this kind of work, they must be that. If, yeah. it, if someone believes that or someone does that or practices that, just go, okay, blank slate. Let me just learn. I'm Discover just going to people. learn. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, and so have conversations with people because sometimes people will leave you alone if they sense that you want to be left yeah. alone. So you don't know what you're conveying if you just keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I often will just say, hey, I, I don't know many people. Can I join your conversation for a few minutes? Yeah. And sometimes they say, oh, this is a private conversation. I'm like, thank you. And I... Take mm -hmm. my courage and go someplace else. Yes, so. take your courage for a walk. <laughs> yes. Um, Joan, if someone, um, do you have some resources or last minute tips before we wrap up for people that are you know, wanting to be more sexual as, as older people or wanting to be more activist around helping people be aware of, hey, we are sexual beings and we have this right? Well, absolutely. First, I mean, I'll be a little self-promoting yes, here please. because that's where all the you stuff is. You have great is. resources or I wouldn't be interviewing you. Thank you. So if you want to learn about my books, which would be a great first start, 
uh, especially uh, the Naked at Our Age, talking out loud about senior sex, oh, wow. and the latest one, The Ultimate Guide to Sex After 50. Mm-hmm. You can find those on my website, joanprice.com. Wonderful. If you'd like to see my sex toy reviews and other news and views, my blog, nakedatourage.com, and there's also, you'll find from either of those resources, a place to sign up for my newsletter, and anything that is happening at the moment, you'll learn about. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Joan. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. And you are a wonderful, wonderful person, a wonderful asset to oh, Woodhall. It's such an honor you. to help bring this information forward. Thank you for all <laughs> the time and generosity you put into this, gathering this information. So I'll see you in a couple months. Good.